bad days have you guys tried the vegan pret cookie recipe? To be honest, it's the only thing getting me through. Like, I made a batch the other night and I feel like my happiness levels have increased tenfold since I made this batch of cookies. They are so good. I have a post on my Instagram with the recipe or just go onto Pret's Instagram, you'll be able to find it there. Also, I've got a vlog of me making them, so if you wanna watch that, you can watch that. But yeah, I highly recommend. Welcome back to my channel, everybody, and welcome to a good old haul. This is a haul, I said that weirdly, haul. Let me just get comfortable because we are in for the long haul if you pardon the pun. We are gonna be doing a little natural beauty haul today. Got some small brands to, like small businesses to recommend or talk about. And I did an order on Naturismo, picked up a few things that I was in need of and I just thought I would sit here and share with you because why not? Before I get into it, if you wanna see some more vegan and cruelty free stuff and things and you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe because then you won't miss a video from me. And if you tick the little bell thingy, you'll get a little ding ding on your phone when I post a video, which should be weekly. Anyway, let's jump straight on into it with, let's go with the Naturismo package. This is what I got. I've been a Naturismo fangirl for quite a while. I think about the money I must have spent on Naturismo and my mind it kind of boggles slightly. And then I quickly think away from that because it's probably quite a lot of money because the brands on there are natural beauty brands or more kind of like ethical, cruelty-free, vegan brands. A lot of like aromatherapy kind of vibes. You know what I mean? Just like slightly more natural, hence Naturismo. And one of the brands that they stock on there is 100% Pure. I used to be obsessed with them. And actually these products, particularly this one, because this is the only one I've tried before. This is the Coffee Bean Caffeine Eye Cream. I used to love this. This lasted me so long. I had a pot of this before and I bought this in first year of uni. So like 2015 and it lasted me ages. It is the most beautiful eye cream. Cream. It is like 20 pounds, I think. So it's not the cheapest eye cream in the world, but it's so gentle. It smells delicious. And the smell of it takes me right back to first year because I recall placing a huge order on 100% pure, um, like the American site. So it's an American brand, it's cruelty free. It's got lots and lots and lots of vegan options and they've got some really cool products as well. I used to be a bit of a fangirl. I used to watch all of their live streams on Facebook and I did this huge order on the American site and it had it was expensive like I I didn't go out a lot at uni like I didn't the money that I didn't spend on going to clubs and buying drinks and entry fees and taxis home and like buying alcohol and stuff I just didn't really spend that so I actually saved quite a lot in that not I didn't actually save it but do you know what I mean like I wasn't having that expenditure so instead I invested in blogging and I bought yeah a lot of stuff on 100% Pure's website and it had, not only was it really expensive, the haul. I'll see if that haul is still up because it's on my channel somewhere, but I might have made it private because it's incredibly cringy. It's one of like my first ever videos. I can link it, but it won't be very useful, I don't think, because I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm probably talking out of my bum because I'm probably saying like, oh yeah, this is a great lipstick for vegans. I don't know what I was talking about. I'd only just gone vegan, so yeah. What was I saying? Oh yeah, on top of the huge price tag of the order, I then had customs charge to pay because they don't sell, they do ship to the UK and they do have a UK site, but it obviously comes all the way from America. So you do have to pay customs on what you order. So that's why I'm so happy that Naturismo stock 100% pure because no customs charges, but they only have a select few products. One of which is this eye cream, which I've tried before. I love it. It comes in this little squeezy tube. So there's no need to kind of dip your finger in it. It smells like popcorn, buttery, sweet, vanilla-y popcorn. It is so delicious. It's really, really gentle. It's just a beautiful cream. I highly recommend this and I'm so excited to have this again. I feel like I've been wanting to buy this for a good year, but I just haven't taken the plunge because it's 20 pounds, you know? And I do really like the Trilogy eye cream and I was working my way through that. So yeah, really excited to have this. Caffeine is supposed to like deep half. I don't really know if it does, but yeah. Quite a chunky tube for such a small little product but there we go. I picked up two lip products from 100% Pure as well. One of which I'm wearing right now. So their lip gloss, this is their fruit pigmented lip gloss in the shade Strawberry. And I don't know if these are new or just newly formulated because I know they had lip glosses that were like lip gems or something like that. They were called something like Rose Quartz and all these kind of like gem names. So I don't know if these are new, but I haven't seen these before. And I love the, the packaging. I think it's really, really sweet. And when I saw it, I thought of the Fenty lip glows. I thought, mm, 
Mary's Quantum Summer. This is a sheer pink shade. It feels really nice on the lips. Doesn't feel sticky at all. I've only tried it for like a couple of days. It's really diddy. It's very small. It's like a Fenty lip glow kind of size. I'll pop some of that on um, to kind of top up my lips. But before I do so, I'm going to put some lipstick on. So this is a fruit pigmented pomegranate oil anti-aging lipstick. The longest lipstick name ever. And I have tried a couple of shades from this range and I really, really like them. They're very creamy, very hydrating, just very pretty shades. And I love the, the colours are really really great and I know that there's so many different brands doing lipsticks now you think like okay there's no new colours that can be invented but just the tones they come up with in this range are really really flattering and my favourite shade ever is called Foxglove potentially my all-time favourite lipstick I know big big claim they don't sell Foxglove on Naturissimo so I went for Clover because it was the closest one that I could find and I like this, don't get me wrong, I've tried it on and I do like the shade but it is a bit dark compared to Foxglove. I would say on me this leans, it is a nude but it's more of a berry nude if you know what I mean. But if you have deeper skin, like medium to deep skin, I feel like this would be a really nice kind of more, more of a nude, like movie nude on you. I still like it, I think it's pretty and the formula is beautiful, it doesn't differ from any of the other ones I've tried. It glides on the lips like nobody's business. So much pigment for such little product and they feel really lightweight on the lips so I really really like the formula in general so... Yeah, and I also feel like dabbing this dabbing this colour, because I've just done a full swipe on my lips, but if I just dabbed a little bit on the lips, I feel like that would look quite nice, you know? Another beauty product I picked up is this Liquid Light Serum Highlighter by Ilia. And I haven't actually tried much from Ilia. Oh, this is in the shade Nova. I haven't tried that much from Ilia. I don't really know why. They have a selection of vegan products. They are cruelty free, but they only have a selection of vegan products and I never really know what's vegan and what's not. So maybe that's why, not sure. They also had on the website, which I was kind of toying with the idea of trying, but I wasn't sure. They had this serum foundation as well. So this is a serum highlighter, but they also had a serum foundation, which had SPF 40. I think it was active ingredient zinc oxide. So I was kind of thinking about trying that. It came in lots of different shades as well. Feel like I could potentially find my match quite easily but yeah not sure because I wanted to look up a couple of reviews first um I think maybe it'd be quite sheer coverage so I don't know if it would be worth the money but anyway anyway I picked up this highlighter because I am in need of one I'm running out of my Charlotte Tilbury liquid highlighter which I do really like but I feel like you don't get a lot of product for, for your money saying that this was quite expensive as well this comes in a pump and I am wearing this today as well I kind of took it out of the actual bottle instead of the pump because I wanted to keep it pristine for this video. Um, but this is a really nice kind of like champagne-y liquid highlighter. I did kind of feel like it was a little bit, not dull, maybe it's because I'm used to the Charlotte Tilbury light wand, like the spotlight light wand, but it is just kind of like a sheen on the skin. And I do kind of want to play around with this a little bit because I put it on before my foundation. I also mixed a little bit in with my foundation and then I added it to the tops, like the high points of my face. I just feel like it's a little bit, it's a little bit lacklustre. It just kind of looks like, like I, I can't really see it on my hand where I've just put it. Whereas if that was the Charlotte Tilbury light wand, I would be able to see like, wow, okay, that's, I can see exactly where I've put it. My hand kind of just looks the same. So I don't know, maybe it adds like a very subtle glow, but it's not the cover effects drops, you know, like the highlighting drops. It's not going to be anything like that. It's very, very subtle. So I feel like I need to play around with this a little bit. Um, it comes in a glass bottle, which is lovely. But yeah, if you guys have got this, how do you use it best? And obviously I do powder down like underneath my eyes because otherwise it will crease. So sometimes it kind of over, I kind of sweep over to where I put my highlighter. And I just feel like it was a little bit of a pointless activity trying to use this this morning. But who knows, if you guys think I look nice and glowy, then maybe it's this shining through. Um, but let me know if you use this or if you like any particular Ilia products that I should check out. Let me know. A hair care product I picked up. This is by the brand Swell, who I hadn't heard of before, but this had amazing reviews. And then I looked into the brand a little bit and they are entirely vegan, which is amazing. This particular hair mask had great reviews. I think the branding is really cool. It's this really lovely box with this, what would you call this? A powder yellow, potentially? It's like a textured box. I mean, I know I'm being a bit of a geek here, but <laughs> the branding seems lovely. And I'd never heard of this brand before, but this, like I say, this mask had so many great reviews and I'm always after a really repairing mask. My hair is really, really dry. It's really dry, it's in need of a cut. I have used this, so this is my hair with this mask. 
after using this mask but I did also straighten my hair so if it looks nicer than it usually does it's because I've straightened it and I hardly ever straighten my hair so yeah take that with a pinch of salt. I liked this to be honest I was kind of hesitant because when I worked it into my hair it has very precise instructions on the back by the way exactly how much to use depending on your length of hair which is interesting but it doesn't feel it's like a leave, not a leave-in conditioner, it's like a hair mask. It is a hair mask. So I used it instead of conditioner after I double shampooed, but it didn't feel silky like a conditioner. Like, you know certain hair masks, like the Naughty Hair Mask, that Intensive Rescue one that I quite like? It's slippery. Like, it feels like just a really intense conditioner, but this didn't have that feel to it. And I think, I haven't used Olaplex in ages, but I think it's a similar texture to the Olaplex, like intense... I can't remember what that thing is called because I, like I say I've used it once maybe like a little sample of it but uh yeah I will keep using this and let you know what I think I'm always after a nice intense nourishing hair mask because my hair just seems to drink up product it just it's very very dry and actually I kind of I never used to have dry hair and then somebody left me a comment on my Accutane video about how their hair got so much drier after they went on Accutane so now I'm thinking potentially that's why my hair is less oily because I'm producing less oils potentially it gets a bit drier so anyway too much information I'll let you know how I get on with this the full name is the ultimate volume mask because this brand seems to be all about nourishing your hair but like genuinely giving your hair volume not temporary volume like some products do so I'm intrigued I'm very intrigued and I'm excited to continue using it. A body product I picked up is this self tanner. So I've been, I've tried many different fake tans and actually I need to update my fake tanning routine video. Although I don't typically have a routine, I just kind of go between gradual tanners at the moment. Maybe in summer I'll hop on that full body tanning routine. Um, but I'm feeling a little bit lazy at the moment and I just want to moisturize and have a little bit of a gradual tan. So I picked up this self tanning lotion by La Vera. La Vera, I feel like have, they seem like they have some really nice products and then I've tried a couple of products from them that I have detested. For example, their eye makeup remover, oh my days. It said it was for sensitive eyes and my eyes, it felt like I was rubbing sunscreen into my eyes. I can confirm that it's not suitable for sensitive eyes and actually one of the reviews of this product was that it's not suitable for sensitive skin because it has essential oils in which I know some people can be really sensitive to essential oils and they're not necessarily that nourishing, not all of them are necessarily nourishing for the skin. So I was hesitant to pick this up, but I did use this today as well. I liked it, it didn't irritate my skin, my legs feel silky smooth. I can't see any tan developed yet, but I only put it on like five hours ago. So maybe it takes a bit longer and a bit of kind of like regular use to get develop a bit of a tan. But yeah, like I say, I've tried so many I've tried so many tanners, but I've also tried a couple of natural brands, like Tan Organic I tried. I've also tried Eco Tan, Tanning Mousse, which I quite liked their Tanning Mousse. I mentioned that in my fav my last tanning routine video because I did actually really enjoy that. What did I try from them that I really didn't like? It's not their winter skin one. I think it's called Invisible Tan, which is like a leave-on cream tanner that you leave on for like eight hours and then wash it off. That is really streaky, really orangey, smells really intense. Same with Tan Organic, to be honest. Smelt really odd, incredibly streaky. It was like a tanning water, although it was described as a lotion. And I think maybe I need to mix it into some actual like body lotion to get it to work. But like, uh, sometimes you just want a product to work. You don't want it. To, you don't want to have to work with it. You just want it to do what you bought it for. So hopefully this will be a good one because it's also less expensive than those other brands. So we shall see. The tanning agent in this, by the way, is the dehydroxyacetone which I know some people have concerns over. So if you are not a fan of that ingredient, then you won't like this. And then last but not least, I picked up some protein powders. I've never really got into protein powders before, but I've seen how they can make quite a big difference if you do work out regularly. Having a high protein snack after you've worked out like in that 30 minute window, I can see how it definitely does make a difference at like repairing your muscles and making sure you're nice and nourished. So I don't know, I just fancy trying these two because I'm not I have tried a protein powder before, but I can't remember what it was called. It was a little sample. And it tasted all right, a bit powdery though. So I'm hoping these are quite nice. They're by the brand Innermost, which I hadn't heard of before. This one's called The Health. Vegan superfood protein blend, superfood supplement, 40 gram serving. And I got creamy vanilla and smooth chocolate. So they've got vegan protein, glutamine, shiitake, mataki. I love mataki mushrooms. Acai berries, camu camu. For a 40 gram serving, they're 31 grams of protein. We'll see what they taste like. I'll probably end up like eating them in porridge. 
even though I don't, I shouldn't really have porridge because it really makes me bloat. How else can you eat these if you're not, if you're not having like a smoothie and you're not having porridge? Because smoothies don't fill me up. I just feel like they give me a sugar spike and then they don't fill me up. So maybe I'll have to like bake something with these. Another excuse, <gasps> maybe I could make prep cookie but with protein powder. That's an idea. Moving swiftly on, I wanted to show you what I picked up from Cree. Cree Organic are an organic skincare brand. They're a small business. And I went on there to pick up a new cleansing oil because, okay, this is my thing. I needed a new cleansing oil because I ran out and I was using jojoba oil, but it doesn't really emulsify, it, doesn't, it does work, don't get me wrong. And I would continue using straight up jojoba oil because it is lovely. But I just wanted something a little bit thinner. Do you know what I mean? Just slightly thinner and a bit more lightweight and my skin really liked when I used this Prelude cleansing oil by Cree and I finished it maybe at the end of last year. I was using it in my Manchester vlog, I remember showing you guys, but yeah, I really like this. It's super, super gentle around the eyes and I was kind of thinking to myself, oh, maybe I should try a different brand, like try something new, you know? But then I thought, why change? If you've found something you love, why change? Because I did venture away from this. The last um, cleansing oil that I purchased was the Pie Cleansing Oil, their light work cleansing oil. Did not enjoy, don't recommend. It's it's overpriced, I think. It kind of stung my eyes. It wasn't that great. I think this is a better tool for taking off makeup. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I picked this up, but they have also, this was 22 pounds by the way, but they also sell samples of th their different products. So I picked up their new Unveil Oil to Milk Cleanser. So this is an emulsifying cleanser. This is just an oil cleanser. And I've tried it a couple of times and I like it. I don't know, I don't know which one I prefer. I think I need to try them both like, and compare them directly, maybe like one on one half of the face and one on the other half of the face, but both very nice. And I also love that you get a proper sample size like this is not just a little sachet where you use it once and you're like struggling to get enough product to even use it once like you could use this probably five or six times to get a real idea of how you react with the product so love that and i also picked up a sample of their body oil which i've used a few times and again still got lots left sinks into the skin like an actual dream if you're really against body oils that are greasy, this might be one to check out or even just buy a sample. I think these samples are around five pound. So I recommend picking up a sample if you really are against that oily, greasy feel with some body oils, because this sinks into the skin, no residue. It, it smells slight, this does have essential oils in. It smells slightly orangey, but it, it's nice. It's very subtle and um, yeah, I really enjoy it. But the overall kind of premise of this brand is obviously everything's organic, but they try not to use uh, like drying alcohols as much as possible and essential oils where they're not necessary. So for example, the cleansing oil has no essential oils in, which I'm pretty sure the pie one did, which is probably was irritating my eyes. There's no need for essential oils in cleansing oils. Realistically, there's just no need, but um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I picked up was this clean hand sanitizing spray. So this is, yeah, a hand sanitizer that you spray on your hands. I shall demonstrate for you now. Uh-huh. It smells like vodka. Takes me right back. I actually like vodka. I still like it. I don't know how I haven't ruined vodka for myself because, yeah, many nights. Does anyone remember the um, cinnamon, the Smirnoff? Was it cinnamon or was it like gold? Yeah, gold and toffee. I remember having the gold like in shots and then... It's cinnamon flavoured and it's like spicy as well as being obviously strong because it's vodka. I don't really recommend that one. I don't know why it had got, what's the need for the gold flakes? Is that just for aesthetic purposes? Who knows? But anyway, this smells like vodka and also the, it was only five pounds. So if you can't find a hand sanitising spray or gel in like super drug, or if you can't get, you don't want to leave the house to get a, uh, hand sanitizer. Check Etsy. Etsy probably have a lot of hand sanitizing like homemade products and also Cree. This one was only five pounds. Really decent size. Comes in a glass bottle as with all this stuff. And 100% of the profits of this product go to, I think it's a children's charity, like a children's home. But yeah, I love that. I love seeing that it's 100% of the profits as well because a lot of brands are saying like, oh, we'll buy from us and we'll donate 10% of profits. Like not 10% of what you're paying, 10% of profits. Sometimes it's just encouraging, it's a way to get you to buy something you don't need because you think, oh, I'm donating to charity, but only a tiny fraction is actually going to charity and like helping nurses and stuff. That, I went on a rant on Instagram about that because I can see how it's well-meaning in some cases like this. I can totally see how it's really well-meaning and I 100% support things like this. But when it's a, this is a small brand and when it's a huge conglomerate brand saying like, oh, buy this product and we'll donate 5% of profits or like use the code 
COVID-19 and we'll give you 19% off. It's like, oh, don't get me wrong. I think it's better than nothing, better than not donating at all. But sometimes if you don't really need the products, maybe just donate directly to the charity. It just feels a little bit icky sometimes. Not so much for like smaller brands, but when it's like a big brand like ASOS who aren't even, don't get me started on ASOS because they're not even honoring the two meter distance, like social distancing in their warehouses. Like they're not giving people the ability to stay safe their own employees to stay safe. So that's another story for another day, but um, I really recommend following Tickover on Instagram. She does these amazing embroidery hoops and she, it's like a, it's a bit, it reminds me a bit of craftivism, which if you are new to my channel, you may not have heard of before, but it's a way of being an activist and doing activism without necessarily like going out with placards, because obviously that's not possible at the moment, but uh, instead of doing like protests, it's more a form of protest by creating something and raising awareness creatively. It's really, really interesting. So I will link that um, Instagram down below because she does these, I think she lives on a canal boat. It's really <laughs> very inspiring. She lives on a canal boat and she embroiders these little signs and she was doing a few posts about ASOS and H&M and how they're not treating their workers very well in the light of this pandemic. It's creative and it's it's sending out good messages. It's, it's good to stay educated, but it's done in a nice kind of like gentle very easily digestible way so yeah i recommend and with that i think i'm gonna love you and leave you please subscribe if you haven't already follow me on instagram and twitter if you fancy and if you do i shall hopefully see you very soon bye